everyone. Thanks for joining me. This is Rebecca from Pegna Fan Blog, and I wanted to continue in my video series for creating an application in Pega 8.4 end to end, right? So from beginning all the way to end. We have already created, if you've been following the video series, we've already created a life cycle. We've built a life cycle with three different stages. Each different stage has a few steps in their process. Um, and we've also configured step one and stage one and created a data page that collects data from the user. Now we want to use uh, the second step, configure the second step to be able to use key data pages that displays information for the user. So that I'm going to create here. I'm going to remove this from my application just so we can show, I can show you all over again from the beginning. add a data type, that's where we wanna go, right? And this one, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna say flower, flowers, right? And here is the description I'm gonna remind myself is flower selections available to user. Okay, submit and we're gonna create. Okay, so here's the thing, right? Uh, any other use of a data page, we were collecting information, but now we wanna display information. We wanna hold records that can be displayed for the user and all these different floral arrangements that we offer that they can pick to purchase from us, right? So in order for us to do that, we need to turn this data page into a database that holds records, right? So, Let's see. Configure source. Let's do. Let's add the property types first. So, I am gonna add the things that I want to display for the user. So, the price of the arrangement is probably my biggest concern. So I'll put that in there, and that'll be currency. To just arrange. Let's going to be text. And then I want the user to have the ability to check yes or no if they want something. So I'm going to use a Boolean here and I'm going to call it select. Okay, so I want to say if those are the three properties I want to display, that's more than enough for me. Um, so if you look at here records, you can configure a source. And Say for instance, this was the page where I was uh, displaying for the manager all the order requests. The order number would be unique for every single order. So I could potentially use that order number as a key. Now if you go back to Java and remember like hash maps, you need a key to be able to call that. So this, you know, it's just more efficient programming. But here, we can't really do that. Right? We can't really do that because the arrangements are going to be the same over and over again. The price is going to be the same over and over again. They I can't use these as a key. So um, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Sometimes I don't see the submit, but let's see, close that up. Okay. So what I can do is I can come over here to data types, click on the three little dots, view page definition. And this is really important because it took me a really long time to get this. So I don't want you to be stuck here forever. If you can't, if your data page does not contain a unique name or a unique property that you can call a key, then Pega does it for you. You can just come here to the definition of the data uh, page. You can list, if you do have the key, you can list it here, just like you did in the other one. Uh, there's two different ways to do it. You can call it directly from the page or come to the page definition and select, let's say, uh, order number here, and that would have worked. Uh, or you can just have Pega create one for you. So Pega will create a unique ID that's gonna be calling to be able to get these records out. Um, we're gonna save that. Uh, let's see what's this.
Okay. I'll close that out. Now we're going to refresh here. Now you saw before, I only had the option to pick those three properties as a key. If we configure a source now, I should be able to see that unique ID, global unique ID PY property that PEGA is creating for me. Now, all of these things down here, they're all background properties. If you notice, and if you remember from your CSA course, PX, PY, PZ, you leave those alone, right? You don't really need to mess with those. So now, um, that's perfect. Now, this is going to be the unique ID, and these are the three properties that I want in my uh, display for my user. And another note, if you don't like the way that you ordered them, you can move stuff around here. It's just a matter of, of dragging. Uh, so, in case you didn't know, now you do. Okay, and we're done. Okay, so now Pega allows you to, uh, if you notice here, export, import, you can add if you had like a hundred different things that you wanted to list, like a hundred different records or thousands of records, you can import those in with the, using an Excel format, CSV, CVS, I can't remember, but CSV is things. Um, and I'll go over that in another video later on. But for the app Flower Shop application, we have what we need. All we need to do is start adding records. And so this one I'm gonna call, this is where I'm gonna call the arrangement that the user can pick from. So this is Mother's Day, because Mother's Day is the bomb. Okay, and let's do, um, just because. Let's do congrats, congrats bouquet, or arrangement, same thing. Happy birthday. Oh, nope. Oh, you saw that. Uh, and then let's do Valentine's Day. And everyone, any guy who's ever, who's listening to this and has sent flowers on Valentine's Day uh, can agree with me that Valentine's Day roses are going to be at a premium charge. So we'll add some money on that. Okay. So let's see. And we have our records. Now, it doesn't look very different here, but let's refresh to see what changes you can see. How data types change. Oh, there we go. So because we're using this data page as a container, as a database itself, that then you get the little database symbol here. Uh, Peg, and it's got a three, so Pega will automatically generate three different uh, pages. The list is pretty much what we really want to call because list is the one that will hold your record. So when you want to call all these records here from the UI or configure it in the step, we're going to be calling the list. And I'll show you what I mean in a few minutes. So flowers, done. We've got records. So now here we got to call it. Okay, so configure view, select arrangement. Uh, field group, list. This time we want the list because we want the records we've already created. Here though, we're gonna call flowers. Flowers. And that brings back the fields that we had. Let's see. Now, I don't want this to be read only, but I do want the price to be read only, and I want the arrangement name to be read only. We don't want people picking whatever they want, right? That's what we have to offer. So, submit. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to save. 
we're going to run. Now, this isn't going to work quite as we want it to work, but I want you to see what we're going to be missing so we can go back and I can show you where to fix that. So let's run this. Like uh, you saw in video two, we have all the information, the order detail, the receiver address, the message. We move on. Okay, so this is what I was saying. It's not quite showing us working the way it's supposed to. It's not showing us the records that we want to see. And so we can close this out and let's head over to our application. Now that you've run this application once, it generated a UI for you. So we want to go to the UI. Select arrangements, select arrangements. So, okay, you know what, before that, let me show you. So this is the step itself. The step itself is going to have that little container, right? This is a container for what we're calling later. So the step is select arrangement. I called the field group list within the step, also select arrangement. So that's here. You click on that. That will open this select arrangement, arrangement underscore select arrangement. And you can see it right there in the ID. Just so you know where you're at. Okay, so if we click on preview, action preview. Oh, no records, right? We wanna make sure that we're we're getting the records we're supposed to. So let's close this out. Our table. We need to open up the properties for this table. Okay, so first of all, I don't like this part here. So I take that part off and this part off. Uh, operations, it's fine. Presentation and default, that's fine. What you wanna look at is you wanna look at this select arrangement. That's what I call that uh, list group within the step. So when you open that <clears throat> page list, you wanna to refer to a data page, right? And this, remember I told you, you're gonna be calling uh, the database page that has the list, this one right here. That's what we want to call here. So I'm going to go D underscore flowers list. You see that? That's what I want to call because the list is the one that's holding my records. So I'm going to save. Close this out. Submit. Okay, so I got rid of, because of the presentation, I got rid of that top header or the bottom header. If you don't need them, if I don't need them, I don't like having it. So I'm going to save. And now let's do a preview. Ah, voila, my records. Okay, so now I can close this out. I know it works the way it's supposed to. Uh, close this out. And save first. I like saving first. I know that it's redundant, but okay. Now I can do saving one. Okay. We move forward. We want to collect customer information. We have the this are the non-key data page that I use to collect information. So that's good. We're good. And now we can pick. Our user can see the list of records that we've uploaded. Our, list or can our user can select, hey, I want to send her just because, or it's Valentine's Day, I want to throw all my money away on roses. So yeah, you click on that and submit. We're going to go ahead and finish running this case all the way through. And um, I'm so thankful that you guys came back, that you're watching this video. Key data pages and regular data pages were so difficult for me to wrap my brain around when I was first learning. And so I knew I had to create a learning video for it.
All right. And that's it, folks. Thank you so much for watching. This was Rebecca from Pegafan Blog. This was a video using key data pages to hold records and to display records for the user. Um, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. I love seeing the comments. That's really nice. Um, anyway, thanks again, and join me for the next video.